full noon site. I'm going to take one in five or ten minutes and I'm just out here looking at the conditions, making an assessment of how good the site's likely to be. Um, the sun's coming and going a bit in the clouds. It's uh, very strong at the moment and it's leaving a strong sun trap over towards the horizon. Uh, as I look down that sun track, at the moment I can see various bands of dark across it. Those are where the clouds are and the horizon itself is probably right now where the bright sea meets that grey cloud. Um, a couple of minutes ago the end of the bright sea was actually below what I thought was the horizon and it was very very difficult to see exactly what was what. Looking at that horizon you can see that the the whole thing is a bit muddy really. It's not, it's not really good conditions this but it's not too bad. Uh, it's very calm there's very little breeze and what there is is following me. I've got my engine just ticking over to keep the boat steady and keep her moving. Um, we're in the Baltic Sea heading north and the oh, sun doesn't look too bad. There's a bit of grey cloud going to come but it's going to take me a minute to get the section. So I'm going to finish my coffee and I'm going to go and get set up. I've lifted the section out of the box put the lanyard around my neck and the first job every morning is just to check quickly for index error which I'm going to do now. I've set the sextant to zero all round and I've got a tiny little bit. That's got it. Yeah it's one, 1 1.5 minutes on the arc. 1.5 minutes on the arc. So we'll just uh, remember that when we go below. Okay now it's time for the sight. I'm looking up at the sky and the sun is visible through the clouds. So I'm going to set up a couple of shades and see how that looks. There's no sun on the horizon at the moment so I don't need a horizon shade. So I'm going to go looking for the sun. There she is. I've found it and I'm bringing it down and I've got too much shade on. That's better. The sun's very hazy in the clouds but the sextant is pulling it out nicely. I think we'll have an even lighter shade. The lightest shade I've got. There we are, that's better. Okay, I'm swinging the sextant like a pendulum to make sure the sun is on the horizon. The horizon as I'm seeing it is really quite fuzzy. But I'm doing the best I can. This is not ideal conditions. And, and that's it. I note the time and it's 20 seconds. The critical thing is to remember the seconds. It's 20 seconds. Looks like 47. 20 seconds. I can remember that. I'm going to take the sextant now. I'm going to put the sextant back in its box. because that's all set. And I'm going to go and write down my 20 seconds and my minutes. And that's the site taken. We read the section, we've got the time, and now we can do the sums. I've come down below with my sextant. Um, you can see straight away the tremendous benefit of having a sextant that can go into its box carrying the height you've just measured. If you've got one of these sextants that you have to jiggle about with the, with the index bar to, to, to get it into the box, get it sold now because you're always going to make mistakes. I just pop my sextant back into the box where it was safe, brought it down below and down here at my leisure I can read off what the angle was. Very important. So I've, I've written down my raw data here. I've got uh, the, uh, the time in UT, 7.47 minutes 20 seconds. I've got the sextant altitude which was 41 degrees 4 minutes 0.9. I've got my dead reckoning position from my chart here. And I've got the index error I've noted down which was 1.5 minutes on the arc. And well I just worked it out. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of that because uh, we'll do that perhaps another day and I'll walk you through the whole thing and show you how it really works. But uh, for now, I've done my sums 
and I've made my plot and here's the chart you probably can't see it because we're not terribly professional with our camera work here we need to get Steve Cottrell on for that but we'll do the best we can and I've got a position line here which I've plotted from that sun site that is the dead reckoning position that is the astro, the astro position line and I'm very pleased to tell you that it's only two two miles adrift from the GPS position so we did all right didn't we the conditions weren't ideal horizon was a little bit fuzzy and the sun was stuck in the clouds but we pulled it down and we got a good result and it just shows what you can do if you're out on the ocean two miles is oh, plenty good enough plenty good enough to find where it is you're going and you need one more position line to make a fix there's no problem about getting that it'll happen at noon and uh, well there you are astro navigation absolutely thrilling <laughs>